Okay, so um, again, my trip uh, from uh, started in Long Beach, California. Uh, checked into the uh, JetBlue about uh, 7.30 in the evening for an 8.30 departure in Long Beach. Told them that I had some prop weapons. They said, are they real? Nope, you're good to go. Third thumbs up. Good old U.S. small airline. Uh, small uh, airport, small, uh, small amount of people, so they were cool. Um, took off, flew across the nation, flew into Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and, um, and that was about 5 a.m. I had the uh, two-hour layover, so around 7 o'clock we took off again to Bogota, Colombia, my big bag being checked through to Bogota because it was still jet blue. When I got to uh, Bogota, I had to go through immigration, then go get my bag, then go through customs, then take the bag and recheck it with the new airline, and then go through immigration again to go through security and then go to the uh, booth. So, um, took a while, got through immigration, got the bag, rolled up on customs, going, oh God, they're x-raying every single bag you have. And they're gonna see that and they're gonna go freaking nuts. So I, I put it on the rack. I said, just let you know that I'm a, I'm a walking dead impersonator. I have some, some fake guns in there so they saw it, it lit up on x-ray they called another guy over and another girl supervisor and let him know that I was you know invited to the comic convention these are fake weapons they didn't get excited please take out the uh, the item so I put my bag up took it out and each weapon was wrapped in a, it was in a clear ziploc bag with one side in U.S. English saying what the whole thing was, and the other side Spanish with pictures of what I do. So it was pretty obvious that I was a Walking Dead look-alike and that these were fake. Um, but, of course, they look real as can be on an x-ray, as well as until you look at the barrel, you think it was a real python. So I pulled it out, showed them there was no barrel, and they're like, oh, okay, good to go. Didn't make me pull out the hatchet, didn't make me pull out the other fake pistol, which is a cap gun, just the big uh, prop replica of Python. So I was like, wow, if that was the U.S., they would probably shut down the air, air, airport. So I got that, put it back in, rolled on, took a while to figure out where to go. Domestic, I went to the, I went to the, the airline that was going to be taken from Bogota to Ecuador, and I said, oh no, you're in the wrong area. This is domestic. That's considered international, and it's the country right next to it. Obviously, I'm no longer in the U.S., so I go upstairs, um, get my electronic ticket, go up to the counter, check my big bag. Um, didn't mention anything about the pistols or the hatchet or anything because, again, it was fake. And if they're fake, you, basically the rules is no real stuff. So I was like, okay, well, I got through JetBlue, two different airports. I got through Customs that said it was okay. What could, you know, uh, a Vankia? Avancia airline, you know, the country right next door. So I get that all done, go back through security, go through the passport. What are you doing here? What are you going? What are you doing? And um, go through the pat down, go through the x-rays with my, you know, carry on stuff. Made it down to the gate 13 in the Bogota airport. And uh, it was, you had to go downstairs in an elevator because the two, all the 13 gate were downstairs. So I had about two hours, so I bought some water, I bought some crazy soda looking thing, uh, had a protein bar, and uh, you know, had a good amount of hour to go before they even loaded the plane. So I fell asleep after getting multiple pictures. It was crazy. One person had a picture and then everybody started coming up. Nobody spoke English. They were all so polite, and they were just excited as could be to get my picture. Um, so I went from being upstairs by the, the uh, you know, commercial shops I went back down to the terminal to kind of hide out. Um, ended up falling asleep. It was just been a long day. So I had been up from 8 a.m. the previous day. Now it's, you know, geez, Bogota, probably around 12 noon the next day. Um, 12 or 1. So I fall asleep. I wake up to my name being slaughtered on the loudspeaker. Um, please come to the ticket counter. So I come up. It says, Police wants to see you at the interrogation room. They found something in your bag. I'm like, are you serious? Customs doesn't have a problem with it, but 
this airline that I'm just going an hour and a half flight is found it and now I've got to go deal with it. So she says, go to go to door 52. I think it's door 52. Uh, and her and didn't speak English, so she's like, go down, this is white door, 52 on it, knock on it, and they'll let you in. So I'm like, I'll figure it out. So I take the elevator up, I go halfway, and I'm like, if it's gate 52, that's the farthest gate, the last gate on the entire airport. I'm at 13, it ends at 52. So instead of walking all the way down to 52, knowing that I only got like 44 minutes before my, my plane takes off, it's about to load in 10. Um, then I stopped and talked to police A. He was very excited. You were walking dead, Andrew. And I was like, no, I, I, I do uh, impersonations. He didn't understand that. Um, but I had need to see the police A. Um, 52. Door 52. And he's like, oh, yeah, gate 52. I'm like, oh. So I was like, okay, well, maybe it was gate 52. So I go around the corner, and I'm like staring down at gate 52, which you can't even see. It's so far down in the, air, in the airport. I'm like, turn around. The police want to see me. I need a white door 52. He's like, oh, oh, okay. You go to 45, gate 45. You go down two escalators. You take a left. There's a gate there. You, there's a white door next to it. You knock on it. That's that's the door. So I go all the way down. Be able to say I was at 13. All the way down to 45, down the escalators, down to where the door is, and I knock on it. And I knock on it again. I asked the girl at the gate there if this is the door. She didn't understand what the heck I was talking about. So somebody finally came out, looks at me, says, please sit down in, in Spanish. Um, I'm like, I'm the guy about the gun. <laughs> That's what I did, the guy about the gun. And so I sat down. He closes the door. I got a plane about to take off. You're, you're waiting to talk to me about something that's obviously not, not real. So a woman police comes up and she's looking at me and she knocks on the door real light and I'm like looking at her going do you know um, I'm here they want to talk to me about something in my bag my plane's about to take off she wouldn't say anything to me I'm like okay so she knocks on the door real light again nobody answers so she just leans it back against the glass and she's just hanging out I'm like I need to get to my plane so I said do you know if they can hold my plane it's, it's, it's actually going to leave in like 18 minutes. Um, so she knocks on the door again. Nobody answers. Third time she knocked on the door. So she gets on her phone, does something, and puts it away. And she knocks on the door again. And just real light. And I figure they're going to be pissed because they think it's me knocking on the door and not this cop. So they finally open the door. They let her in and they tell me to come in. So it was, they were waiting on the police girl to arrest me if it was real and the security for the airline was in the room so three security guys the police woman uh, please open your bag okay. so they haven't even opened the bag so I guess they x-ray all the bags before they put them on the plane in Bogota saw a big python light up in the x-ray and sent it right to the interrogation room and, and they didn't even come and get me they had the girl at the gate summoned me over the loudspeaker and tell me to go to 52. That was odd. You think if somebody had a big ass gun and they thought it was real, they would come and get me, but they didn't. So I open it up and I say, you know, here's my paper. I'm a you know, look alike at the Commodore uh, Comic Con Ecuador. I've been invited. These are all prop weapons from The Walking Dead. And there was one of the guys that works here. He was giddy. He was a fan. So I was like, okay, that's a good sign. So I pull out these things, which have all the explanation on both sides, and, and uh, I pull them out, and I, he's like, is it real? And I was like, no, no, it's not. Here, I opened the chamber, show there was no barrel hole, there's no firing pin. He's like, oh, okay. And I pull out my other gun, which was a, a, a cap gun, smaller in case they did pull that one, that they would let me use the other one. So he had to, I had to explain that to him. I had two guns, and I pull out the hatchet, show him it's plastic. When I pull the hatchet out, um, the other guy just got it's getting season seven. You know, he's like, oh, and he recognized the hatchet or the axe. Uh, hatchet or axe, I don't know. Give me my axe, Rick. So um, I pull all that out. I'm like, my plane is about to take off, literally. Can you hold it? And uh, they did their Spanish thing between them. 
and he says, okay, you're done. He took pictures of everything I had laid out on the table, with multiple pictures with his iPad. I put everything back in the bag. He says, okay, you're good to go. I'm like, okay, can you hold the plane? He says, yeah, go hold the plane. Just go now. So I'm running back. So gate 52 to gate 13. The plane was due to take off right then, or uh, five minutes till then. And I'm busting ass. So I, I get all the way there. I get to the elevator to go downstairs. The layer of elevator is full, so I have to wait for a full cycle of the elevator so I can get down to where the gate is with my stuff. The girl uh, come down, she's like, oh, come on, hurry, hurry. So I go there. She uh, looks at my stuff, puts me on the, sends me out the doors to this, this bus. They have buses, buses the size of city buses that pick you up outside the gates, and then they drive you to the, to the plane wherever it's at on the tarmac. So she pops out and she runs out there with me get on the bus, bus has to make a U-turn, big ass bus, goes back on the, on the track, and we're going further down away from 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 1, the plane was in the last gate, number one, or well, not even gate, the last position you can put a plane on the entire, entire air, airline, airport, and I was at the 52 for the interrogation, the last gate in the airline. What are the, what are the odds? So I'm asking her, I was like, what about my bag? I'm barely gonna make it to the flight. How is my bag gonna even get on this airplane? She says, oh no, you're good. I'm good? How do you know I'm good? So I ask her again, do you know that this is gonna be on? Yes, my partner actually put it on the cart and drove it out to the plane. I'm like, I don't know how he could have made it there you know, as quickly, but she said he did. I figured I wouldn't have a bag for a day or two here in Ecuador. So I, they dropped me off at the air, at the airplane. I have to walk up the, those open stairs, you, you know, old school open stairs that you walk up to get inside the side of the plane. I walk in and I get these, these, these one-eyed looks. This is the guy, everybody looked at me. This is the guy that held up the plane. I don't know if they knew I held up the plane because I supposedly had weapons in my bag, but they were definitely looking at me I'm like I wasn't late because of me so anyway I go down to my seat and um, they're still trying to put this one guy's bag in the overhead all the overheads are taken I'm the last person in the plane so uh, the, the stewardess she works you know she's trying to find me an overhead she had to put some stuff from one side to the other and finally found me a spot Other, or otherwise I would have to check that carry on and I had the glass frames for my pictures in there which would have broke so she found it thank goodness boom I went to my seat it was in between two people so I was like do you mind if I sit here there's three open seats she says no you can sit there I was like fantastic so at least I got a place to lay down once the flight goes so we get to tr we get to uh, what do you call that trolling or moving into the lane to, to the airplanes to, to take off and we stop and the guy goes over the loudspeaker I'm sorry, the airline, the airport has been shut down. I was like, no. Did they just shut down the airport because they figured out that I had somebody had weapons in a bag like they would in the U.S.? I was like, this would be too epic. It's like, a plane we had a problem on takeoff, a mechanical problem, and it skidded off the air airstrip into the sand. The whole airline, the whole airport is shut down for at least a minimum of one hour while they do whatever they need to do. So like, it was an airplane skidding instead of my weapons. Um, and then you saw, you see the airplane and it's off the air, off the, the uh, landing strip with all the emergency vehicles around it. They're doing whatever needs to be done. So I just lay down. I was like, it's time just to take a nap. So I fell asleep. Yeah, I wake up to move it a little bit. It was just a, I don't know. Can't remember the word. I'm just tired. So it, it's it's uh, still moving, just to another position, and it stops. So I, I go back to sleep. And I feel it moving again, and this time I feel like it's going to be, you know, in line to take off. So I stand up, uh, sit up, and buckle in. So we take off, and I fall asleep again. Uh, we wake up to the food cart. This is an hour and a half flight. All the other flights, you know, you get a soda and a bag of chips. Uh, they gave me a sandwich, and then they came through with the, the soda cart, and there was scotch and wine on the cart. And I see them pouring it for some people, not getting money from them. I'm like, how much is the, no, it's free, free. Well, then give me a glass of wine. It was, it was later in the day, I would have done a scotch, but 
So I had a glass of wine that it was a ham sandwich, ham on a bun with this barbecue sauce. It was really good. And uh, ate it, had the wine, went back to sleep for a little bit, and then uh, we landed. So we landed in, in Ecuador, uh, getting off the plane. I had to go back through immigration. But uh, before I even got there, uh, the, ho- the air- airline or the airport staff had caught on to me. And they were coming out and taking pictures, very excited to meet me. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. Everybody had a picture. So uh, obviously they thought it was Andrew, um, even though I get, get my business cards. And so I go into line to, to, to you know, wait for immigration. And the line was very long for a small airport. And it wasn't moving. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And people were taking pictures with me in the line. There was a couple of fanatic, you know, some really excited fans there. And the airport uh, staff, one of the managers, obviously it was, supervisor, came out, we're going to take you into another line. I was like, okay. So they took me over to the diplomatic line, which was much shorter and much quicker. And I was able to go through that. And they were all concerned about me having someone there to take me to wherever I needed to go because I didn't need to be that person in Ecuador just walking around by myself. So I um, went and got my bag um, off the carousel and then had to go through customs again. So as I put it through the bag of customs, then I got to actually see that x-ray light up. It, it was like that python was the only thing in the whole bag. So I let them know what was going on, showed them the python, let them read the, the uh, explanation, and they were satisfied. They were good to go. So I put it back, everything away, rolled out to the main area, and all these people were lined up just packed in with cameras. So I'm like, really? No. Nah. So when I walked through, there were a lot of people taking pictures, but there wasn't any cheering or anything. So it was just people waiting for people on the on the airplanes. Um, but um, as soon as I got to the end of the first row of these people, before I went out to the main area where they all were, I got pulled by the hotel, uh, the uh, airport staff, back into a hallway. Let's take you this way. I was like, okay. So I go back in the hallway, thinking that they were going to take me, I don't know, out and around without all the people, and. Uh, no, there's just more uh, airport staff that didn't ha- get a picture with me, but they wanted to get a picture with me. Uh, so uh, I did pictures with them in the, in the hallway, and then they said, are you sure there's somebody waiting for you? And I got on the cell phone, contacted the operations manager, and he told me who was waiting for me. So just as soon as I went out the door back into the main area, she was there with her security 